All right, Coach Moore. So first things first, uh, I had to check the Spire Center out today. Have you been out there? Uh, not recently, but we yeah, I was I've been out there a few times. It's National a beautiful Collegiate facility. Open. What's that? Um, National Collegiate Open, right? Uh, nah, we had some some doles there, but uh, I think I think the next year. Case Western turned it into the National Collegiate Open, maybe. That's what it was. But well, the Ohio Ohio Open. Got it. That's what it was. So, okay. We got Kent State coming up. Big match. Yep. How excited for this match are you? And what do you think the biggest thing that you guys need to get out of this? Not a duel, Coach. First things first. Not a duel. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I think our intention was to have a duel to start. And then, you know, the way things are, are going uh, – different changes every day. Um, the one that kind of broke us was the Mac. I got a call on Tuesday that the Mac was trying to approve a 10 match uh, maximum, extra match uh, maximum after a dual meet. So what that would have done was kind of limit the ability to get um, all of our guys, not only two matches, but to get some of our, you know, our backups and non-starters matches as well. So we, um, we kind of thought development of the whole team um, was better than worrying about wins and losses. And with this format, the round robin format, we'll be able to get, you know, close to 40 matches for the team and, and for Kent's team as well. So it's going to be good for both teams just to get matches and see their guys wrestle multiple opponents and be able to gauge where they're at uh, this part of the season. Yeah, so it's like I, I walked through it yesterday with uh, Coach Anderson and his lineup. And then obviously you guys beat them last year on a control of Matt call. I don't know. I think you – would you have beaten them on criteria or, or would they have beaten you on criteria last year? No, oh, I don't even know if that matters anymore. Well, no, you won because it doesn't matter <laughs> at all. You won the match. Uh, won the match I don't know. Somebody, somebody morning, said right? they – yeah, somebody said they would have won. Um, I'm not sure. It was, it, was, it was a good duel, man. It was, it was crazy back and forth. Probably four matches went different than, uh, you know, we thought they possibly would go and – um, so that was, was fun. That was a good duel overall. Good, good, uh, competitive duel for both teams. Yeah, 133 was a crazy match. I remember. Wasn't it a last second takedown by uh, Patrick? Yeah, yeah, it was a good uh, throw with like four or five seconds left. Knocked out down. the Mac champ. Knocked out the Mac champ, yeah. Uh, Rudy. Yeah. yeah, they let him hang in there, and he. Uh, I think that match was really the turning point for him to start building confidence. Um, and his wrestling, mean, he was out for a long time last year. Buffalo was out for a whole year. So he's kind of, you know, trying to build that confidence back. And then I think that match kind of, you know, he stepped it up. He beat him. He beat the kid from Central Michigan that was, you know, ranked pretty high in the conference. And then, you know, finished the season pretty well placed. And Who are we going to see out tomorrow? You know, I've never done a preview in the street. I'm in the street right now. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm getting a, a, a tire rotation and oil change. But we got to get a preview out there. If Jim gets yep. to talk, you get to talk. I'm on the run today. Who do we? Who are we going to see in this? In this, I'm scoring it like a dual meet, just so you know. Tomorrow, as I'm doing the broadcast, it will be treated as a dual meet. Okay, you just got to know that right now. Who are we going to see in tomorrow's matches? Starters versus starters. Let's call it that. Twenty-five. Okay. Yep. So twenty-five. Uh, tough uh, Russell offs in the room. We have two guys very similar. Both guys are actually knew each other quite well. Training partners. They've worked out since they were, I think, 10 years old is what I was told the other day. But um, a true freshman, Jake Manley, ended up winning the best out of three series against uh, Cody uh, Moseman. So we'll, we'll see Jake Manley tomorrow. Um, the Otsego night. Yep, yep. Tall, lanky, um, you know, tough kid, making good, making a good – well, he was at 120 last year. So um, big, big 125-pounder. And we'll see. I mean, he's got some good movement. Um, you know, hoping he just goes out and fights, and it's you never know what to expect with the true freshman. But we like what we see so far. So we'll have Manley at twenty-five tomorrow as a starter. We'll see both guys though, because and then I'm actually going to stream the starters versus backups and backups versus starters, vice versa. After the starters versus starters, I'm actually going to stream it on GoHiocast. One mat, okay. probably OAC for the other mat on YouTube. So I'm kind of excited about that. Thirty-three. Justin Patrick, uh, Justin's back from, from uh, last year. Like I said, he really started building some confidence in his, uh, in his wrestling at the end of last year. 
um, after being out and uh, look, looking great uh, so far. You know, been been training his butt off, strong, fast, um, old. Maybe he's four years old. So a lot of man strength, a lot of experience, um, and, and we like we like our chances with him. He's been looking good, um, but first match of the year, we'll see how he performs. Forty one. Uh, 41 will be a, a transfer, Joey Caprella, uh, Lima Central Catholic High School, I believe, went to Old Dominion uh, last year and then transferred here as a redshirt freshman for us. Um, again, came in, didn't know much about him, even though he grew up in Ohio, but he's been working his butt off. Um, gritty, tough kid, looking for that opportunity to get his uh, first win for us. 149, who are the Vikings going to send out as a starter? 149, we're going to send out Marcus Robinson. Um, and, and Marcus – Transfer, right? Yeah, transfer from Buffalo. Again, um, great kid. Um, great kid. Just does all the right things, train, trains hard, you know, still every day trying to get better, asking questions, doing extra stuff. Um, amazing pickup with him. So just uh, becoming a leader, um, teaching these younger kids how to drill. And uh, moving up a weight class, which will be good. I think he'll have more energy. And hopefully he's able to open up and just, um, you know, show kind of his offense and his attacks and get a victory tomorrow. 57. 57, again, uh, tough, tough Russell offs in the, in the uh, not in the room, but upstairs. We had um, Ryan Ford end up beating Nico Odor, who was our starter from last year, and the best out of three. A couple close matches. Obviously, they knew each other, but – um, Ryan's coming down from 65, so he's a big, pretty big 57. He's in his fifth year. He's hungry. Um, again, hardworking kid. He, he started at 49 for us a couple of years ago. Ended up at 65 last year. And, um, had, a, had a little injury. Wasn't our starter, but he was determined to come back, make the cut to 57, and, and represent us um, for the first duel. 165. 165, we have returning uh, MAC place winner. Riley Smucker uh, back in the lineup. Again, Riley really turned it on the second half of the year, beat a couple guys he lost to the MAC championships. Um, good size, 165 pounder, and really kind of coming into his own at the end of last year. So we're excited to see how he kind of starts this season. 74? 74. 74. <clears throat> we're throwing out a redshirt freshman, Anthony Rice. Uh, Anthony's from Steubenville. Um, Russell 57 a little bit last year, 65. Um, you know, just I think he's just starting to tap into his potential. Um, better, better training this year, more consistency. Um, no injuries this year, so just uh, working hard, kind of filling into that weight class. Walks around maybe 178. So we talked today. I mean, he's he's got to have a lot of energy. He's not cutting weight and get to his uh, get to his positions that he's good at and see what he has. 84. 84, we have DeAndre Nasser. He's a returning, again, returning Mac place winner. Last year he was a true freshman. We threw him in the lineup uh, last year and, again, just kind of started really rustling well at the end of the year. Had um, – should have, you know, should have, could have, uh, would have beat a few uh, wrestlers that were ranked. Uh, the Bloom kid, he was – had him beat a couple times. It was a top uh, 15 guy, but just a tough kid. Uh, so hard to score on, so strong, squatting 500 and something plus pounds. And uh, we're just, for him, we're just looking for him to open up a little bit more, be on his attacks, set the pace, open the score up, and wrestle, wrestle to his positions. The Bluffton Pirate, state champ in 2019. He's uh, yep. he can roll. I like watching him. He, he's got some hustle and he's powerful, like you said. He's, he's compact and he's powerful. Oh, he is. He's so powerful. 97, who are the bikes going to send out? So we got veteran Ben Smith coming back. Uh, he started the last two years for us at 197. Um, continuing to, you know, learn the sport, uh, know his, his uh, strengths. And, again, uh, good leader in the room, working his butt off, doing all the right things. Um, be a good, good rematch. I think these guys have wrestled numerous times, three, four times maybe. So um, hoping to see, you know, both guys go out there and, and get to their offense, uh, make it a match. Get some, uh, get some attacks going and um, open up a little bit, you know, give, uh, give the fans what they want to see and also um, see where, where their conditioning's at right now. 
Big boys, 285. Who are we going to see for Cleveland State go out on the mat for the starters? Big boy, we're throwing out John Kelbley. Uh, yeah, returning, returning Mac place winner. Uh, real close to qualifying for nationals last year. Um, lost a, a tough one in the Concy semis, the Mac championships. But uh, John, again, became a leader on our, on our team. Um, has talks with our, our guys. Uh, does, does a lot of extra stuff to set the tone. And just, again, he's last year was his first year heavyweight. He bumped up from 197 um, last year and was like 235. This year he's 245, 250, stronger. Knows how to rustle a heavyweight um, weight class. And, I mean, we're expecting him, you know, to control the match and, and again, get to his positions that he's, he's strong at and um, kind of see what happens. We're, we're kind of hoping for another, another match with him and uh, Spencer Berthold. Um, there's some really, really good battles last year between those two, but looks like that might not happen this year. Okay, so you were in Kent for a decade, I believe. You were at Kent State. You guys, uh, you had a national champion with Dustin Kilgore, multiple All-Americans. You coached my nephew Ian. You know, you coached all these guys. You coached All-American Mike De Palma. I thought you had a great impact on Kent State wrestling. Is does it mean a little bit more to wrestle the Golden Flashes? Oh yeah, I mean I think you got to take all those things into consideration. Um, I mean, what sits apart in my mind is you know when I was at Kent for all those years, we had wrestled Cleveland State, and we never never saw Cleveland State as as a threat. Um, once we kind of got into our swing of things at Kent State, you know, after I think my first couple of years, maybe two thousand six seven, um, felt like we always dominated Cleveland State. And, and the tides are starting to turn, um, and, and I believe turning in our favor and with the, with the win last year. Um, obviously, that gave us a little more confidence. And then just another, another year of getting good guys in our room, getting the right kids training. Um, I don't know. We're, we're, we feel really good about the way we're headed. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be special. But the other thing is, you know, they're right down the road. I mean, we, we battle these guys for recruits. Um, we want to say we're the best Division One school um, in Northeast Ohio, so uh, they're kind of standing in our way um, to a certain extent. And we think, you know, we come in tomorrow and we we win more matches than them. You know, somebody's keeping team score, somebody's keep, keeping team score. Um, we're more worried about just wrestling, wrestling our best, wrestling our positions, and uh, just getting that experience of, of competing with everything that's going on this year for us is development of the whole team, uh, building the team, building confidence, growing together, learning together, and just competing every day in the room. Um, and we finally get a chance to do it tomorrow against another team. I can't wait. We're going to be broadcasting Starters for Starters on ESPN tomorrow. Uh, you guys will be sending the link out, I believe, on your Twitter. I'll retweet that. And then I will be live streaming the other three sets of matches. So that will be on Ohio. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, two out of the three of the other ones will be on Go High Class YouTube and probably OEC YouTube. So they'll be live. Those will be free. Um, you got to have the ESPN app to get the live matches for starters versus starters. And I'll be calling those matches. Coach, thank you for coming on the, the Barbarian Hour. Yep. I appreciate it. First time I've ever done it in the street in the rain. Um, yep. I think it'll be okay. I think people are going to get the message. I'm excited tomorrow for 125. I'm very excited about that matchup. Obviously, 133 is going to be great. PA guy in gold, and I believe Patrick's a PA guy. So, a PA battle at 133, that's going to be great. Do you have anything else for me, Coach? Nah, Zeb, I think they're all going to be great. I mean, we've been, we've been uh, trying to get on the mat with another team for a while now, and, and uh, finally the time has come. Uh, we, we feel like our guys are prepared. They've, they've been outstanding through this whole last three, four months, um, dealing with all the protocols and all the stuff they, they've had to handle and, and all while uh, maintaining, well, not maintaining, but uh, getting a 3.5 GPA this semester. So we've got to throw that in there. These guys are doing all the right things. Um, couldn't, be, couldn't be prouder of the way they've handled everything. Now it's just exciting not only for us, but for them to get a chance to compete. And that's what we're, that's what we're here for, um, to give these guys an experience, give them an opportunity, 
to go do something they love to do. Tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., first whistle. Check out barbarianapparel.com. Get some gear, get, get, get some hoodies. Hey, and if you're wondering, green Nike hoodie, double XL if you were wondering. I know you, I know you probably weren't going to ask. I just thought I'd put it out there. I'll, oh, I know. Actually, I'll actually throw it on tomorrow. I want to see steam come out of Coach Anderson's ears, okay? <laughs> uh, can't wait, Zeb. I appreciate all your support. Looking forward to you being here tomorrow and hyping this thing up a little bit. All right, Josh. I will see you in the morning. First whistle, 11 a.m. on ESPN. You got it. Thanks, Zeb. Thank you.